What's going on guys, this is here and into today's video we're going to learn how to carry an AD carry. The tips can be applied for any elo below grandmaster so make sure you watch this until the end. If you're AD carry main and you really want to get better make sure you sub, like and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out anything from this channel. Here I coach a YouTuber called RTB that is basically hardstack emerald so I'm gonna show you if you're hardstack emerald this video is gonna help you a lot. Rule number one. Choose the right runes and summoner spells. Runes and builds are not the most important thing to carry. At least that's what people think and say. But the reality is that they can sometimes contribute a lot to why you lose a game. For example, take PTA on Ezreal. Taking Presti attack on a champion like Ezreal when enemies have Brom with Warmog, they do have mid lane Galio and they do have top lane Orn can actually end up losing your game really really hard for you not taking Conqueror and right here in the RTB situation we see that he's playing Jinx Sona against Senna Kai'Sa a lane phase that they don't necessarily need to play to win because Senna is slightly stronger than Sona early on and Kai'Sa and Jinx are kind of the same Jinx has more range and more wave clear but Kai'Sa also has a bit of wave clear but a little bit more damage so in this case we went for a fleet because we need to play to not lose if she wanted to play aggressive let's say she had a nautilus then of course you go for pressed the attack the summoner spell is barrier she doesn't need cleanse right here and ghost is not so good in this meta so barrier every single time or cleanse in this current meta ghost can be good for the later stages but not in the current meta rule number two make a game plan of course right here we play Jinx, Sona against Kai'Sa, Senna so it's important to ask yourself do we play to win or do we play to not lose and this is just a push matchup, a safe matchup where both supports are like pretty safe, both supports are good range you know they can poke but you're not really necessarily playing Senna uh, necessarily to hard stomp the lane phase and you're clearly not playing Sona to play very aggressive so she needs to farm, play safe, play chill, abuse her range because she has more range than Kai'Sa and Senna but realistically speaking she should farm good, get good vision and play, play for good items which would mean usually berserker boots and then just going for the kraken slayer so uh, the axe 1300 gold for example can be a good deal so she doesn't need to do anything crazy if she has more, more minions and she like does something crazy or she has more hp she can go for poke but her normal goal is to play slow and around the minions and around good recourse make sure to make a game plan in your game do you need to win do you need to not lose do you need to play aggressive what's the game plan and of course the champions that you play will tell you that number three rule is cover the invade it's really common that people get invaded and die they die level one is because they don't cover properly so right here sona and jinx they stay at the same angle which is absolutely boosted what they should be doing is the following thing that i'm going to show you right now you should always look to actually cover on different angles if adk stays here you stay here if support stays there you stay here it's that simple okay and of course in a best case scenario mid lane is human and he's going to stay mid lane to prevent the five man gank here from this angle like this but all in all what you should remember here is that if the support you see that he's actually looking to cover this angle and it's going like this then just go mid lane and try to cover this angle do not cover at the same angle with your support because you don't want anyone to die so if they actually invade here you leave a word you run if they invade here you leave a word and run or at least no one is gonna die because as we can see here if the Nautilus is here or a blitzkrieg and comes and hooks maybe both of them can actually die so it's better to just cover on different angles if he's get the push early one especially in the first three waves you gotta get the push in most of the matchups if you can't that's fine but you gotta try so right here we actually see this matchup they are leashing and they play sona against senna two matchups with range so getting the push is important when you play jinx against kaisa the supports are both range but jinx has significantly more range than the kaisa so they want to get the push the tip is go short way you shouldn't really go like rtb did right here just because this is going to be a lot later of course if you're scared of the getting cheese by an nautilus or something you can actually consider going like this but especially with the jinx against uh, kaisa senna they actually might have a chance to win the 2v2 in this case of course it's a kaisa level one so it's incredibly op level one and they have exhaust so if they cheese here they lose but personally i think that you should always try to go short wave and if you play a bad matchup and you know you're gonna lose if they actually stay there it's very simple you try to go in the lane phase at like 0, 0 40 seconds and you try to ward that brush so you know that you can go short way going short way and getting the push is extremely important in any elo for ad carry and of course the fifth rule is get the push 
push just try to hit the minions get the push and it's really important because if you get the push sona can actually poke his support can poke easier if you have an engaged support he can walk up easier on top of the wave and you also get level 2 advantage with the range support is more about getting the push so your range support can actually walk up and play aggressive as you guys can see rtb got the push he has more minions right here so he's able to walk up aggressively and poke sona is able to walk up aggressively kaiser has to back off so taking the push will one give you level 2 advantage if you want to get level 2 advantage and that will happen with the melee support two it will allow your support to walk up aggressively if it's a range champion you do not need to get level two you need to play for range you need to play to zone you need to play to poke at level one after you get the push so this is why you need to push early on let alone the fact that you can zone them let alone the fact that as you can see easy peasy right here they just get the kill easy you get the push early on that simple as you get to the laney phase, you really want to make sure you look at the wave. Is he pushing? Is he coming into you? Is he pushing into them? So right now, you are going to actually... Now, this is a time where you need to lose to look at the lane. So as we can see, Emerald player hardstuck he just pressed tab he didn't look at the wave. And some of you... And here I told him, I screamed at him, Bro, look at the wave, look at the wave! And he told me, Oh, but I have minimap! What? I have minimap! And I told him, Bro, but how do you know if Kaisa is fast, fast pushing this? How do you know if she needs to recall? How do you know if she's slow pushing? How do you know if there are like 6 minions right there against 6? Or 5 minions versus 5? Or how do you know maybe this is even a freeze? So, it's really important as you're getting to the lane to watch the wave constantly to see what is the decision, what is the wave state currently, and what is the decision that the enemy ADK is taking. It's that simple. Watch the wave as you get to the lane. Next tip is rule number seven, word more at proper timing and proper places. So right here, as we can see on the screen, this is a slow push into them. And we know it's a slow push because we have slightly more minions than the enemies. So right now, I told RTP, hey, you gotta push this really, really fast. The problem is that he told me, oh shit, but I can see my wave right here on the minimap. It's really close to their tower. What does it mean? Well, if our wave is close to our tower, that means their wave is also close to their tower. So I got to crush. And here I told him immediately, bro, you got a word now because you know you're going to overextend yourself to push the wave. You got a word right now to make sure you're less, you're less susceptible to getting ganked. So this is what you're going to do. The timing and the, the place has to be good. So the timing will depend on where is your wave. wave. Right now, we can see that this wave is going to connect with the enemy wave in like three to five seconds. So that's the time that you have to go for a word. You want to make sure you actually going for a word ideally when the minions don't hit each other they don't really fight with each other so now this is what he's doing boom shakalaka boom shakalaka he goes for a word boop he puts the word and he immediately goes to the, to the wave of course if he crashes a big wave into the tower he can go for a deeper word i recommend you if you're below grandmaster don't go for deep words this is really good but i mean if you really want to you can put this one this one is fine as well but if you're below grandmaster don't go for deep words like oh but i want to get deep work because i have a big wave in the tower fuck that i mean just get a normal word and pressure them into the tower it's better and you're not really gonna die because if you're gonna go for a deep word as a carry when support in solo queue is omega boosted you're gonna get pranked by enemy jungles and mid lane so it's better to not go for deep words and of course if you're right here in your grandmaster uh, support there are this word is extremely good this word is extremely good this word is very op if you're below master and you're like ad carry main don't even like okay just skip this you don't care about like wording that much as long as you know the information that i just told you the place has to be good and the timing has to be good and don't don't try to stress yourself too much with the like the the let me the word deeply you don't want to word deeply so that's what he did he worded there fast and then this allows him to push again if he had a bigger wave and crashed in the tower he could go for a different word more deep on the river but in this case he didn't need it the reason why he puts the word is so he can push that is that simple rule number eight manage your wave properly to get more opportunities and proper pressure so right now we can see rtb is actually pushing and he does have a word on the river right now we don't know what is the jungle and the senna is quite low so what did i tell him right here so there are two options slow push three waves and then crash it in the tower so you can get plates and potential poke or just faster push right now by fast pushing so pe perfect case scenario is fast pushing why is fast pushing better here is because senna is really low so low that he wants to recall so you want to accelerate right now the push and you want to be able to look po to poke into the tower if the senna was half hp and you know that she's not going to be able to recall then you have to slow push stack three waves go into the 
tower but since she's very low hp and she will go have to go for the recall i told rtb what are you doing let's look to push but then the moment we saw that she stays in the lane we can make a big wave so if she actually is human and she stays in fog of war like right here and she's actually gonna fake recall which means fake recall is when they act that they want to recall but they don't and then you don't see her you should fast push because that will potentially actually force her to stay if you don't don't force her to stay you get plates if you force her to stay you get a kill so right here slow pushing if you don't know if senna stayed or not is bad you should faster the push should accelerate but the moment she stayed in the lane then you can slow push make a huge wave and you can play around it when again as you guys can see jungle came but it doesn't matter because rtb has the challenger coach right here telling him what to do Rule number 9. Communicate with your teammates through the pings. It's very important to understand that sometimes they won't listen to you but it's really really important to also make sure they know what you're actually looking to do. So right here the RTB right now he wanted to just push this way. So he should push the ping push ding 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 push ping. So Sona has an idea about what he wants to do. She just wanted to recall. Of course she has the Sona syndrome branded nothing clicking back. Well most of the sonas are like this some of the sonas are very smart but very rarely maybe grandmaster plus so they're all useless all have no brain i mean i don't even want to talk about it because you guys are gonna say bro he's flaming but the people that played with the sauna he's gonna say i know i know he's right he's right he's right you know so you need to ping and just ping it like once twice maximum i would recommend to ping three times and right here of course uh, make sure you ping your Viego to run. I mean, there is no reason for him to actually help with the push. So you should ping Danger the Viego and on my way one time. Of course, don't ping on his head and don't be annoying like ping six times because then he's going to smite your cannon. But let him know, set up a boundary that you want to tell him, bro, you're taking my wave. What the fuck are you doing? This is my wave. Of course, you want to tell him in a very polite way with just one or two pings. Uh, this is what he should do. And then, of course, right here, Sona should also push, but she doesn't really hit the minions. And right here, they should hit the tower of course right now the guy should also ping assistance assistance and just also typing can actually help dive 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 what the fuck is she doing right here this is a free kill of course this is emerald so people don't really have very good fundamentals uh, so this he should just type he would dive we dive we take a plate and then we go for drake or even better you don't go for drake you just get the kill kaisa's game is over and it's gg bg the next rule is focus on maximizing time. Don't help for the Drake if it's not needed. Don't help for objective if it's not needed. Right now they just make this play. Let's take a look at what happened after. So Sona, Senna actually died right here. Okay. And then right now he's going to end up pushing this way. He's getting this plate. And of course the Uga Booga jungle is going for the Drake. What does it mean? That means usually you want to follow for the Drake because you want to help. In this specific situation, in general, you never want to help. But realistically speaking, you can't play League of Legends with the mentality. I only fight if it's a good fight. I only fight if it's around an objective i only fight because you're never gonna pick a fight in solo queue we both know that people are stupid enough to fight for random objectives stupid enough to fight for no objectives stupid enough to fight when they shouldn't be fighting so my recommendation if you play solo queue instead of being the player that never fights because he thinks solo like people shouldn't be fighting there you should adapt to if a fight is good or if a fight is bad and specifically if a fight is doable or if a fight is impossible if it's doable then you should consider helping your teammates if it's impossible consider ignoring them of course so right here for example he needs to like i always consider to help with drake but if we actually check the minimap right now we do have jinx pushing that doesn't really matter he's starting drake but the thing is in this specific situation the briar is top lane you guys see that briar is top lane what else do we actually see on the map what do we see right here as inform as, as crucial information i see that Sphiz is getting the push mid lane so we get priority on mid lane we also have level 5 Viego right here so we can easily secure the objective without us being there usually if you, we didn't know that briar is top lane i usually look at the hp of the drake if it's like 3k plus 2k plus i usually always hover always stay always try to help as long as i have enough hp and mana because if you're like 100 hp or 200 hp and you risk dying there i wouldn't even consider to to fight so if it inquires you that you're gonna die there by following you do not fight if you have half hp or full hp or mana and you don't have like 5k gold then you can always consider uh, staying with your teammates if the chances of enemies are 
high enough for them to contest the objective so if we didn't know that briar is here and the drake is let's say 2000 hp plus i would stay here and i'll try to look to hit the drake and help them as long as they have enough hp that is more than 500 600 400 like below 300 i don't recommend i recommend you to ignore and again in this case it doesn't matter that the hp of the drake is 4000 just because we have information about viego we have information about prior mid senna just got back to the lane phase so she's pretty late to the party so he should not follow he should just recall immediately again i'm not telling you to not follow your teammates but i'm also not telling you to follow your teammates i'm telling you to be smart to move your camera there and if something can go wrong there and you have enough hp consider following if it's a completely unwinnable fight consider ignoring if it's something that you're not sure maybe the enemy team is going to be there maybe not then you should be there and again if you see that you recall and any, uh, all of your teammates die and you lose drake watch the replay because it's probably your mistake rule number 11 rotate properly so learn how to rotate properly at proper times at proper places now we see that jinx is eight minutes in the game she goes to bot lane and i'm saying to her bro 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 go mid go mid because fizz is there and they are pushing your wave so i told him hey keep watching your wave fizz is taking your wave you do not want to go to the bot lane but at the same time you don't want to stay mid lane you don't want to spend your time mid lane so you stay here take the farm easy peasy easy peasy just take the farm take the farm take the farm is that easy and then after you take the farm what do i tell him i tell him hey bro you don't want to stay against the ezreal mid lane that is level 12 or level 10 or like a lot a higher level than you go back to bot lane so you make the transition right here the uga booga mid lane goes mid and then the uga booga jinx goes bot it's that easy so that's how you rotate you rotate here he rotated because fizz was pushing his wave but then he always wants to back, go back to bot lane because fizz like mid lane when you're ad carry and you go mid lane you always have to ask yourself how many levels are you behind because usually you're very behind so you only group mid lane and you actually spend your time there if you're strong enough to play against the enemy mid lane and usually that's gonna happen after the first tower is gone next is adapt to the decision making of the jungle adapt to your jungle do you want to recall right here because you killed the senna guess what it's wrong let's take a look at this so right now rtb has 1200 gold he has really low mana as he wants to recall senna just stopped their recall so what is he gonna do he's gonna kill this kid instantly so he's gonna push and now i tell him bro recall 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 because he, he just told me he needs to recall because he has kraken slayer which is true but then i see the enemy jungle being invading right here and i'm like oh so we're gonna let kaisa move there without taking the plates because kaisa is definitely gonna kill your jungle or maybe come to the lane in both cases if you have viego or if you have jungle around you should always consider to actually stay and keep pushing and kind of help him and by help him i don't necessarily mean you go there and you help him but also you pushing the wave can actually mean that you are helping you know and what do i mean by that i mean of course you are contri contributing to something because now look boom he's just moving he adapted his decision making to his jungle even though he had a lot of gold of course this is also because the chances of him of this decision being very good uh was very very high so obviously that's that's the reason why he did it that's the reason why he did it right here and it worked of course if let's say the jungle was uh in the mid lane or jungle was at raptors and he just takes raptors and backs off he would recall immediately but not in this case not in this case the last rule of this video is rule number 13 that's a bad number rotate properly in the mid game so right now you want to rotate after the mid tower is no sorry you want to rotate after the bot tower first one is gone usually if your mid laner forces you to go mid or if let's say you're 10-0 and you want to group mid faster or simply you're in challenger and you rotate top because your jungle is a human and your support is a human and they all play it with you you can also group top but my recommendation if you're below grandmaster only group if you're actually getting the first tower on bot lane and then you can go only on mid lane i don't recommend you to group on mid lane on top lane sorry uh, and again now if you're challenger you're gonna say what do you mean i group always on top lane in challenger and grandmaster and it it works because you have teammates but in low relo sometimes and a lot of the cases people won't play around you so mid lane you're a lot safer i want to play against a syndra that is two levels up on me rather than playing against a fiora that is five levels up on me split pushing or against a set against syndra i have a chance even though it's a very annoying champ but again set i'm gonna get completely pranked malphite same thing so right now he gets tower and i told him hey bro from now on you need to fight from now on you need to group from now on you need to be mid lane so play for objective so what did he do he went mid lane of course we're also paying attention to the bot lane 
wave if Fizz is pushing and the bot wave would be here of course he wants to return back to bot lane to push this wave and then to rotate back to mid lane afterwards now he goes mid lane immediately and then after he goes mid in immediately i tell him hey you're gonna stay here until the bot wave is gonna push into you so right now he has to make a decision kaisa he, she's very bad so she didn't push this wave but if kaisa is a human right here uh, if Kaisa is a human and she's right here and she's pushing, RTB has to make his way back to bot lane unless Fizz is hitting the ultimate and unless he knows he can get something reliable on mid lane like a tower on mid lane in which case he can trade the bot tower with mid tower usually if Fizz wasn't here and he doesn't know that he can kill Ezreal and Kaisa is pushing he needs to return to bot lane in this case Fizz was human and Kaisa was not so good so she pushed now pretty pretty late so this is NA solo queue so we expect goofiness right here uh, so he gets a tower and here I tell him, hey, now you're going to play around your jungle and Fizz ultimate. Be careful because you're still squishy, but you're strong. So you can play with your teammates. So he's not really prioritizing too much farming. He's more staying around team uh, teammates. But as you guys can see, he's still taking farm. He's still he's participating in the team fights, but he's also able to really catch waves. And that's basically the game. It was easy. GG. BG, if you truly want to get better, check out my Discord. Guys, tier on the Discord with the coaching. There are people that got from Gold 4 Hardstack to Grandmaster. This guy has 85% win rate in Master. He was Gold 4 player two years ago. I coached this guy. This girl, April, April 17, May. As you guys can see here, our whole story, Diamond. This is the proof. You see the Discord, you have seen the proof. No coach in the world shows you the real achievements and real, really what he achieves, all right? I'm telling you and I'm showing you that there are people that are from Bronze to Diamond, from Gold to Grandmasters, and there is not only one example. You can see here, there are so many examples. This girl, for example, she was Platinum when I first coached uh, her insane insane so if you really want to get better if you really want to improve in this game this is the proof and i'm showing you that you can do it so if you haven't tried my coaching check out my coaching you gotta do it it's really really good you see the proof right here it's gonna work for you it's absolutely amazing check out my coaching on besides.com and book if you're super serious about winning go ahead and book it right away see you in the next video Bye bye